Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and our Uranimfing series. This is Uranimfing Basics for Beginners, Volume 2. Like I said, there's an entire series. It's, it's aimed at bringing people from the very basics all the way through the advanced techniques. Um, this is Volume 2. I would recommend, if you haven't seen it already, start with Volume 1. I'm going to have that linked here. And we're gonna also have it down in the description. And that is gonna start with all of the fundamentals, the important things to understand before you really even hit the water, okay? It goes through a lot of the fundamentals and it goes through a lot of the gear. So I recommend you start there. There's also the five biggest mistakes video. That was a very popular video. Um, and that goes through some of the common mistakes we see people make when they're just getting into urine and thing. Those will all be listed down below. And like I said, there's going to be many videos in this series. We're going to have all the information down below in the description. It's going to show all the videos in the series. And then for the particular video that, that you're in, it's going to have a very detailed outline with timestamps and everything's going to be broken out in chapters. So everything should be really, really easy to find throughout the entire series. So we're, we're growing very quickly. We're nearing 10,000 subscribers and we are gonna be doing a pretty significant giveaway when we hit 10,000 subscribers. So I've decided I'm gonna give away a JP Ross custom fly rod when we hit 10,000 subscribers. And we're gonna do some other cool giveaways in there as well, like some of our merch and our hats and stuff like that. So I hope you'll consider joining us by subscribing and hitting the notifications bell so you can be you can know when we're gonna launch that, that giveaway. So anyway, um, I appreciate all the support, and we are going to get into Urine and Fing Basics for Beginners, Volume 2. All right, let's talk about Urine and Fing Leaders. Um, Urine and thing leaders can get pretty complicated, and I think they can be really overwhelming for people who are just starting urine and thing. And the first thing I'll say is there are manufactured leaders out there. Um, I don't use manufactured leaders. I tie my own. I've actually never used a manufactured leader because I want complete control of how I want to build my leader, right? Um, for the style that I fish, for the water that I fish, I just want complete control over that and I can't do that with a manufactured leader. Maybe it's simple for somebody starting out to use one of those manufactured leaders and we'll, we'll leave some links in the description below to that stuff as well. But everything I'm gonna focus on in this section of the video is gonna be about tying your own urine and thing leader. And because there's so much detail in this section, um, I'm gonna do my best, we're gonna really get into the detail in the description of this, um, but in the description of the video itself, I'm gonna leave all of that detail. So I'm gonna break down my leader formula. I'm gonna give you the lengths of the materials that I use, the, the materials that I use, and then the, the weight of the materials I use. And I'm gonna pr provide links so you can see where to get those yourself. So this is gonna be a complicated section. I'm gonna do my best to break it down as easily as I can um, in both the way that we talk about it and show it, but also in the description of the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna detail it out so you can look back and just kind of like see it for yourself. Urine and thing leaders are gonna be made up of a couple of sections. So I wanna start at a high level and just talk really briefly about those, those different sections of the leader, okay? We're gonna start with what we call the butt section of the leader. So this is kind of like the main line of the leader. It's what's gonna attach from your fly line and it's gonna be, generally, this is gonna be the heaviest portion of your leader. It's generally gonna be fairly long, but this is gonna be the butt section of your leader, and that's gonna go from the fly line all the way down to your high visibility cider, okay? So the next section is your high visibility cider, and that's going to be, you know, various, however you wanna tie it, really, but it's gonna be a high visibility, most likely monofilament line, and it's going to be what you're gonna be able to see as your, as your nymphs are drifting down. So that's what you're, that's gonna really allow you to see what's going on a lot of times. It's gonna tell you where your nymphs are. It's gonna tell you if something is actually happening under the water, maybe a fish took, and you'll see that line pause. That's really gonna help you see that. There are various ways to tie that. I think just find the way that you wanna tie it. But that section is then going to tie to a tippet ring, okay? A tippet ring is just a tiny little metal ring that, is basically gonna terminate that part of the leader and allow you to tie your next section on. The next section is going to be your tippet. So everything I've talked about so far is gonna be above the water. Your tippet is going to be the section of line that's actually gonna be in the water, okay? So your tippet will tie to that tippet ring that was attached to your high visibility cider. So we're gonna tie the tippet there. 
and we're gonna tie a length of that nice thin line and that's gonna go down to your flies. So the tippet and your flies are basically the section that are going to be underwater. Okay, so that's the general makeup of a urinymphing leader. So we got our longer, stiffer butt section, which goes down to a high visibility cider, which ties to a tippet ring. And from that tippet ring, then we have our thinner diameter tippet, which then goes to our flies. All right, so let's get into detail on the different sections of leaders. So we're gonna start with the butt section. So the butt section, again, is gonna be the section that's either gonna connect to your fly line, or if you're using a mono rig, maybe it connects to that, or maybe you don't even need the butt section because your mono rig is gonna act as that. But I use a urinymphing fly line, and I am using about a 12 foot section of Maxima Chameleon in 15 pound. Now, I go a little bit lighter than I think most people start with when they're beginning urinymphing. So you'll see a lot of people doing 20 or 25 pound uh, monofilament line like Maxima Chameleon, Maxima Chameleon on their butt section. I've never gone that heavy, um, but you may choose to go that heavy. We're gonna get into a little bit more later about microliters and the difference between heavier lines and lighter lines in your leader and how they kind of affect things when after we go through the formula. But for now, just understand, I'm using 15 pound Maxima Chameleon in about 12 feet for my butt section. I use a single piece of Maxima Chameleon in the entire 12 foot range, right? So you'll see a lot of people, if anybody sees the leader formulas out there for like Devin Olson from USA Fly Fishing, he starts with 25 pound and he steps it down every few feet or so. What that does is it creates a more tapered leader, but it also creates a ton of knots. And what's gonna happen with those knots is they're gonna caught, get caught in the guides of your fly rod. So when you're trying to cast your flies, you're gonna have a harder time getting that line out. They're gonna get caught, you know, when you're trying to like even fight and land a fish, there's gonna be more knots for you to get caught on. I just think it's way simpler and way easier, especially if you're a beginner. Don't try to tie all those different steps down of different weights of lines. Just pick a line that's in the middle and use a single section of that so you're not dealing with all these knots. I think that's really important for a beginner. Okay. Now, in terms of attaching the butt section to your fly line, um, if your fly line has a welded loop, I would just use the welded loop and you can just simply tie in the butt section of your, um, of your leader, you can simply tie a double surgeon's loop. Okay, so it's, it's a really easy knot to tie and then you can just do a loop to loop connection. All right, so that's gonna be a really simple way of connecting things. Um, it will get stuck in your guides a little bit more than say a nail knot would, but I just think a nail knot is so difficult to really tie effectively that most people aren't gonna do it right. And um, I just think you're better off using a loop to loop um, and just dealing with the one knot that's gonna be there. All right, the next section of the leader is gonna be our high visibility cider. And I see a lot of people tie this differently as well. Um, ultimately, I think tie it as long and as intricate as you like to be able to see. So it's gonna be something that you're gonna wanna be able to see, so tie it the way that you wanna see it, right? I do go slightly heavier line on my cider than I could. And the reason I'm doing that currently is it's just way easier to see. The thicker that line is, the easier it's gonna be able to be seen. Um, I think in my next versions of my leaders, I am gonna go a little bit lighter on these. Um, I really don't have trouble seeing my leader in most situations. So I'm gonna try stepping it down a little bit lighter, but I go from the butt section of 15 pound down to a cider section also of 15 pound, and I'm using a monofilament high visibility line in both the high visibility yellow and the high visibility red. I'm pretty much using um, amnesia. I use this for both my regular urine and thing, but I also use it for my salmon and steelhead fishing. I, it's, it's high quality line, it's really easy to see. Another line that I've used for the high visibility yellow is um, Suffix Elite. Um, I used that for a long time. I have this in a slightly um, um, smaller diameter. So sometimes I'll start with my red, which is a little bit thicker, and then go down my small, smaller diameter yellow. And I think it's good to use two different colors in your, um, 
in your leader and that you'll see certain colors show up better in certain lighting conditions. I think in most lighting conditions that high visibility yellow really pops. I see that almost all the time, but every once in a while, the red line really sticks out a little bit better. So I think it's important to have multiple colors. Again, I tie my own. They do make like by color tippet line that you can use as a high vis visibility cider. Again, I never do that. I just, I just wanna have control and I wanna tie them the way that I wanna tie them. So my current formula right now is 15 pound amnesia and I do them in one foot section. So my total cider distance is gonna be four feet. So I'm gonna have four feet of cider material, but I'm gonna go a foot of the high visibility yellow to a foot of the high visibility red, to a foot of the high visibility yellow, and then a foot of the high visibility red. And because that yellow shows up more than the red does for me, that's the section that I want tied to the tippet ring that's gonna be close to the water, right? So from the water, I'm gonna have yellow, red, yellow, red. Okay, that's the way I like to tie it. Um, and you'll see, if you ever get into what they call floating the cider, which we're gonna deal with in another video, if you have, I've got those knots, those knots can be good for um, soaking up some, some material that's gonna help that, that cider float. Um, don't worry about that for now, but um, that's how I like to tie it. If you wanna tie it more simply, you could just use one color or you could do less sections. Um, you could, again, adapt it for what you think is right for you. I like doing it the way that I do it. Um, one other piece of advice that I would give, you'll see in some videos, people tie the cider material, but they in between the knots of the cider material, they are leaving tag ends of that line sticking out. This can be helpful for being able to see the cider material, a um, little more visible when you see those tag ends sticking out. For me personally, I don't have any trouble seeing my cider material. Um, and I think for a beginner with those tag ends sticking out, what it's gonna do is it's gonna, it's like a tippet magnet, right? It's going to catch your tippet and your flies a lot. And so until you really have your casting motions down and you feel really clean and you're not getting tangles in your flies, I would not use those, I would not leave those tag ends sticking out. I would cut those knots as clean as you can um, and I would not leave those tag ends out. Once you get a little more advanced, maybe you leave those. I know certain people like them. I just think for a beginner, that's a really bad idea. Okay, so as I'm tying these different sections of line, any time I'm tying the thicker butt sections and the cider material sections, when I'm tying those sections of line together, I am using a double uni knot. You also hear it called a uni uni knot. I think this makes a smaller knot, it's a very clean knot, and it's really easy to tie. All right, and then to terminate your high visibility cider, you're gonna tie it to a tippet ring, okay? So when we tie it to a tippet ring, I'm just using a clinch knot. Nothing special here, just I'm using a clinch knot, and I cut that tag end down as low as I can there as well. So the reason for using a tippet ring at the end of your leader is that you're gonna have two very different diameters of line typically between your high visibility cider and your tippet. Again, your tippet is gonna be much thinner and it's the only section that's gonna be under the water most of the time. So tying thick line to thin line is not always easy, but not only that, the section of line that you're gonna replace all the time is gonna be your tippet. So your tippet's gonna be replaced probably multiple times throughout the day. You don't have to cut back your leader every time you're retying if you're tying to a tippet ring. So that tippet ring is gonna allow you to keep the main sections of your leader completely intact and they will never have to change until you decide that you wanna change them. Um, what I find is that my high visibility cider material will often fade in the sun so they don't become quite as bright. That's really the only times that I've changed out my, my leader materials um, on the butt section and the high visibility cider but that tippet ring really makes that possible because I don't have to keep cutting it back every time I tie my tippet. All right, so the last section of your leader is going to be the tippet section. So this is gonna be the section that actually goes into the water and where you're gonna have your flies tied to. I use fluorocarbon tippet. Um, fluorocarbon has a few advantages over monofilament. Um, so the fluorocarbon, it tends to be a little bit stronger. Uh, it doesn't break down as easily, like it doesn't get, um, 
you don't get the abrasion that you get with monofilament line, so it's a, it's a little more resistant to that. It also refracts light at the same rate as water does, so it's, it's supposedly not as easily seen by the fish. Um, but in general, it also sinks better than monofilament line does, and it has less stretch than monofilament line. So there's a few advantages. Anytime I'm fishing under the water, I'm using fluorocarbon line. Anytime I'm fishing on top of the water, I'm using monofilament line. Okay, the, the tippet that I use is Real Flora Flex Plus. Um, in terms of sizes, my go-to size on this is 5X tippet. So I'm typically tying on 5X tippet. Um, if I need to get down deeper, um, I've got faster water conditions potentially, and I'm having trouble getting my flies down. I couldn't drop to the six X tippet. That's a little bit thinner, right? It's going to allow my, my flies to drop down a little bit faster. It's going to be less resistance on the water. Um, if I'm in an area where I've got really big fish and maybe I drop down, maybe, maybe I go as heavy as four X tippet. So typically my go-to is five X. I go through way more five X than I do anything else. Um, and in most conditions, I can land a 20 plus inch fish on 5X tippet with no problem, considering that I have you know, a pretty good urine and finger rod that's gonna absorb the shock and really protect my tippet. So your tippet section is gonna generally be the section that you're gonna adjust depending on conditions, okay? So you know everything that we've talked about so far from the fly line all the way down to that tippet ring, so the, the, the butt section and the high visibility cider, those are those are lines that are basically going to stay intact the entire time, right? Those, those are not going to change. When you're in slightly deeper water, maybe you're going to put on a longer length of tippet. If you're in shallow water, you, you can put on a shorter length of tippet. If, if you need to downsize your tippet to lighter line because you need to get down or there's like more spooky fish, you can do that. So the tippet section is going to be the section you're going to adjust. I start with about six feet of tippet. Um, so I want about six feet from my tippet ring down to my flies. And the reason I do this, it's a little bit longer than what most people do, but here's why I do it. It allows me a little bit more flexibility if I get to a section of deep water, but if I get to shallow water, all you have to do to adjust your depth is to raise your rod tip a little bit more. So your cider will be a little bit further off the water, but that's not really that big of a deal for me. I feel like Again, I think I've told you guys this, I feel 90% of my hits because I'm keeping such a tight line. I do use the cider, but it's less important to me. Um, so I like having that longer tippet section because it allows me a little more flexibility. I can get deeper if I want to without getting my cider into the water. But if I'm in shallower water, it's no big deal. I just lift my rod tip, I take that cider further off the water and I can adjust my depth that way. Um, it's easier than cutting my tippet back and forth as I hit different runs that maybe are deeper or, or shallower. I cover a lot of water when I fish. I hit a lot of different kind of water when I fish. I don't want to keep changing up. So I make my tippet section longer and I just adjust my fishing as needed as I do that. I mentioned the term microliter a little bit earlier. So what is a microliter and when do I potentially want to use it? So when you're talking microliters, it's, I want you to think of, it's still your standard liter, right? That the formula of our liter doesn't change, right? In terms of the length of the lines, um, you know, the types of materials we're using, the different sections, all of that really stays the same. The difference is, with the butt section and the cider material section, I'm just gonna be using thinner diameter line. That's really the only difference. It's just, I'm using thinner lines, okay? Now we talked about with the standard leader, you know, I'm already kind of on the verge of being considered a microliter. So with a standard urine and leader, people are generally starting off with a 20 pound butt section, maybe even a 25 pound butt section. I've never gone that heavy. I've always gone a little bit lighter. I, I, I go with the 15 pound butt section and that's always just been really comfortable for me. But, you know, a microliter basically starts probably at that 15 pound butt section and goes lighter from there, right? So um, I'm my new liter formula is going to be dropping from 15 pound butt section with the Maxima Chameleon down to 12 pound Maxima Chameleon for my butt section. And then my cider material, I'm gonna drop down a little bit further. 
I am right now doing 15 pound amnesia and sometimes 12 pound um, of the suffix elite, I'm gonna drop down to 10 pound um, high visibility yellow and high visibility red amnesia and I'm gonna still do those one foot sections but it's gonna be 10 pound. Okay, so that's really the only change that I'm making in my leaders. Same materials, just going lighter on the butt section and the, the cider material. The tippet stays exactly the same. That doesn't change, right? That, that part that stays in the water is going to remain unchanged from what I would have normally done with my regular leader. Okay, so we understand what a microliter is. Why would I potentially want to use it, right? So... The biggest difference comes down to one of the basic fundamentals of urinymphing, and that is keeping a tight line from the tip of your rod to the flies at the end, right? And so what happens when I have heavy lines? Gravity is going to pull on those lines. So if I'm using a 20 or 25 pound butt section and, and cider section, that's really going to be more weight, and it's, it's going to hurt my ability to get a really good drift, right? And so the lighter the line, the easier you're going to be able to keep the, the tight line between the tip of your rod and those flies. So the lighter line of the microliter is gonna allow me to do a couple of things. It's gonna allow me to fish further away from me while still being able to keep that tight line because I have less weight in my line. It means I can have a longer distance out and still maintain a really good drift. It's gonna keep those flies from drifting toward me, keep those flies from lifting up, right? The lighter the line, the better for fishing at distance. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to allow me to use lighter flies than I would with a standard urinymphing leader. So um, I don't always want to use the heaviest fly possible, right? If I'm fishing further away from me, maybe it's not any deeper over there. Maybe it's shallower, but I have to fish further away from it. I want to be able to get away with lighter, with lighter flies. And potentially, those lighter flies may drift a little more naturally sometimes in the current than a heavier fly, right? So there are reasons when I want to use a lighter fly. A microliter is going to allow me to fish further away with lighter flies and still maintain that really good feel of my flies and have a really good drift. So that all sounds really great. So why wouldn't everybody just use a microliter, right? So there are disadvantages to using a microliter as well. The number one disadvantage is that they're harder to cast, right? So with a standard leader, you're using that heavier, thicker butt section, it's stiffer line. It's gonna help you cast. It's gonna help those flies get to where they need to be. A lot of people feel that they have a much more accurate cast when they have that heavier leader, right? And so when you drop down to a micro leader, you tend to struggle a little bit more with your accuracy of, of being able to hit a pinpoint spot behind you know a rock or whatever like that and so it may take a little bit of practice before you feel comfortable on a microliter so this right here is really why i recommend that if you're new to urinymphing i would go with the standard urinymphing leader get used to that and then start stepping down your lines a little bit until you, you get more in line with, with a microliter. I'm not saying you have to use a microliter, right? I think you just use whatever's comfortable and works for you. But if you want to start tinkering and experimenting with your leaders to try to become a little more stealthy or be able to fish further away from you, then you know going that route of the microliter might make sense. And But try stepping down in small increments. Don't go from a 25 pound main line right down to a 10 pound main line, right? That's gonna be drastically different. So start with your standard leader, make small increments down as you get used to that, and, and you know you can work yourself more toward the microliter. I, I started off with the 15 pound, I'm making adjustments now to go down just to, to get a little bit different feel with my leaders. So casting is the number one disadvantage of using a microliter and just that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult the second disadvantage really is that now with my, visi my, my high visibility line that I'm using for my cider material, it's gonna be thinner, right? So that means it's gonna be a little harder to see, right? So that thicker line is just gonna show up better. So if I have thinner diameter line, I'm gonna go from 15 pound amnesia down to 10 pound amnesia, it's gonna be harder to see, right? So, um, you know, it's just one of the drawbacks I have with this. I have to experiment and see what I'm gonna like. I personally don't think I'm gonna have any problem seeing the 10 pound line, I have fairly good vision, but here's the other trick. We're gonna talk about this when we talk about polarized sunglasses a little bit more, 
But if you use polarized sunglasses and you use the copper or amber lenses, it's really gonna make those colors pop and your leader is gonna stand out so much more. So if you use those glasses, I really think that when most situations, you're gonna see that 10 pound leader or whatever pound leader you're gonna use a lot better. So as I said before, I think you just got to do what feels right for you, right? So if you're new to urine and thing, I would start on the heavier side. I would start with more of your standard urine and thing leader. And then, you know, if you want to work more toward those micro leaders, after you feel comfortable with your regular leaders, maybe try stepping down those line sizes and just do them in small increments until you until you get to a point where you, you feel like you're kind of at your optimum place, right? So ultimately with these leaders, you make what's right for you, right? So I give you my formula so you have a starting point, start with those and then adjust as you see necessary. And that's the whole thing with urine and thing. There's so many people with so many different, different opinions. The only opinion that matters is your own, right? Do what's right for you. This is a baseline, start from there, adjust as necessary for yourself. All right, we are gonna wrap volume two here, but we have so much more coming. Uh, we have one more volume that's going to help us get prepared to be able to hit the water and then we're going to be on the water for the rest of the beginner series. After the beginner series, we have several videos that are going to be in our advanced series and it's going to be tackling really important things like reading water, selecting flies and other advanced techniques and tips. They're going to help you a lot when you're out there. So. Anyway, we appreciate you following us for this entire series. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon for Volume 3 and lots of adventure along the way.